In this video, we're going to be covering the topic of choice theory as we look at two different models to how agents make choices within an economic context. We'll be discussing the standard model of rational choice theory. We'll look at its basic assumptions grounded in the idea of perfect information. We'll then go on to talk about what happens when these assumptions break down and look at the alternative models that are coming out of behavioral economics as it is presenting us with a new set of context-dependent models for how agents make decisions within complex and uncertain environments. As part of our definition for economics, we said it was about the efficient means to achieving valued ends, defining value in an abstract sense. In the process of doing this activity of economizing, agents will have to make choices about how they expend their resources in order to achieve those things that they place a higher value on. With choice theory, we are focusing on this question of what are the primary parameters that define how agents make choices within this process. As always, heterodox and standard economics are going to take two very different perspectives on how to answer this question. On a fundamental level, there are really just two ways that choices can get made. Firstly, the agents have information and some internal logic that is generating an independent decision autonomous from any specific context. Or agents may draw upon reference to a social, cultural and environmental context in order to aid them in their decision making. As we know, the standard economic framework is based upon analytical methods of reasoning. Analytical methods of reasoning are specifically designed to focus on the internal workings of a system. They do not and cannot model the system in relation to its environment. Thus, any analytical modeling framework will try to model agents' decision-making as a closed formula, meaning the model will contain agents who have a fixed set of well-defined preferences, rationality and complete information with which to make autonomous decisions independent from any context. And if we want to come up with a closed form solution to this, these agents are going to have to have perfect information. Inversely, complexity economics is going to use nonlinear models to allow this process of decision making to be an open system. Central to this model will be the idea of uncertainty and bounded rationality, meaning we cannot obtain all the relevant information and process it logically. This fundamental limitation means that agents cannot make decisions based purely on the rational analysis of objective information. Behavioral economics will then present us with a number of methods to how agents operate when rational choice breaks down, by imitating others, by using heuristics and narratives, all of which are social, cultural or environmental contexts that enable people to make choices. Rational choice theory is the idea that economic agents have perfect information, both in time and space. They can know all prices and products available across an entire market. They are also perfectly informed of all the events that have previously occurred or will occur in the future through the use of probability. And they have an infinite capacity to compute all this information. From this, they can, on aggregate, derive information that is directly correlated to some kind of underlining objective reality and then will act in a logically consistent manner upon this information. This is the so-called rational expectations hypothesis that basically says that the information that agents act upon is known and cannot be systematically inaccurate or random. It must be correct on average. An important thing to note here is that standard economics does not say that individuals never make mistakes. It recognizes that individual people sometimes make mistakes, but states that on aggregate they do not. This model is working the same way all linear systems models work. It is saying there will be a lot of noise in the data, people will make mistakes and will get misinformed, but because this is random noise, it will on aggregate cancel itself out. Because it is random, meaning not correlated, 
one person's misinformation that goes in one direction will be cancelled out by another person's misinformation that goes in another direction. If we add all these up, we will get some kind of equilibrium that is a correct representation of the actual underlying information. This is part of the genius behind linear systems theory. It is how we can get very abstract, clean models out of very complicated and noisy data. It works by assuming the individual has the same properties as the average, and this will work on aggregate as long as the system is linear. This is why we will never get a model for any specific individual agent. We will always be talking about averages and aggregates because we have to take everything to the aggregate level to cancel all the noise and then assume any individual is identical to this average individual that is derived from the aggregate. The net result of all of this is that we can, on average, expect people to behave as if they have perfect information and act rationally upon it. Rational expectations hypothesis is a necessary condition to obtain internal logical consistency in stochastic dynamic aggregate models and economics. All of this will of course only work if we're dealing with a linear system. The standard model sees the world as fundamentally knowable. This is the Newtonian paradigm, what is called the clockwork universe, where the universe is seen to be a big machine like a big clock with all the cogs turning as time moves forwards. The whole thing is predetermined and time is theoretically reversible. Theoretically, we could simply turn all these cogs backwards. Thus, the future and the past are determined and because of that, they are knowable. It is simply a question of figuring out how it all works and doing lots of calculations to compute it all. Within this paradigm, the idea of uncertainty is treated as a function of incomplete information about a well-defined, objectively knowable past, present or future state. This whole idea is captured and formalized within economics and finance under the term ergodicity. Ergodicity is a term that originates within mathematics and physics. It has a quite subtle technical formalization but in non-technical terms, it basically means that if we take some system and run it for enough time, it will eventually return to a previously experienced state. It is symbolic of a closed system where there are only a finite amount of states to the system. Thus, given enough samples of its past state, we will be able to model its future state. The same probability distribution that governed the past will govern the future. This means that a sample from the past is equivalent to a sample from the future. This makes the future knowable and quantifiable through probability distributions. Point to take away is that in order to create closed form models, we have to be able to come up with some value for the future state to the system and ergodicity is how we do that. Ergodicity presents us with a certain interpretation to uncertainty. Because we can place a value upon it, it is really what we call risk. So the standard model is based upon the idea of complete information, but it only really works in simple environments where there's a very finite amount of choices and the agents are making choices independently. But these properties don't always hold. In more complex environments, there may be a very large number of options. Agents' choices may be interdependent and due to non-linearity and feedback, a risk-based analysis of the future may break down. In such cases, we will not be able to use a model based on perfect information, and we will need to replace it with an alternative, what is called bounded rationality. Herbert Simmons created the term bounded rationality and talked about it as such. Quote, the term bounded rationality is in my mind largely intended as a warning to economists that you cannot predict human behavior by setting up an abstract model of what is rational and inferring the behavior from that. That you have to know a tremendous amount about what is inside the person's head and what method they are using for calculation. That these are empirical questions that are not to be settled by sitting in an armchair. Bounded rationality is rather a strong demand that like any other empirical science that proposes to explain the world, we go out and observe the world. 
bounded rationality is essentially the idea that agents cannot know and compute all information about the options available to them, and faced with such incomplete information, they use all sorts of shortcuts in order to cope. Central to this idea of bounded rationality is the idea of radical uncertainty and non-ergodicity. Ergodicity only really holds within linear systems. In nonlinear systems, it will break down. This was first made explicit within physics by the findings of chaos theory. The idea of the clockwork universe was central to the Newtonian paradigm that supported classical physics for many centuries. But in the mid 1900s, it became called into question by a number of experiments. And by the 70s and 80s, it became accepted within physics that it was not applicable to nonlinear systems, as chaos theory came to describe. Chaos theory, on a very high level, showed us that the dynamics to a nonlinear system emerge out of the nonlinear interactions between the parts during the system's process of development. This is part of what we mean by the term sensitivity to initial conditions. An indiscernibly small change to the input value to the system can lead to a very large change in the output variables at a later stage, due to these compounded feedback loops allowing for small changes to grow exponentially, and this gives us the so-called butterfly effect. The net result of this is that our capacity to predict the future state to a nonlinear system is very limited. In terms of the capacity to make numerical calculations, it falls off exponentially, which means you're going to have to stay putting in more and more information just to get a smaller and smaller increase in your horizon of prediction. We won't go into the details here, but nonlinear systems go through phase transitions. These phase transitions are structural transformations meaning a sample from the system's state space prior to the phase transition and after will not be comparable. This means it is highly unlikely that there will be some closed form function that maps between the variables within each state space. These phase transitions create path dependency, meaning time is essentially irreversible. Nonlinear systems also have non-normal probability distributions meaning events that are statistically virtually impossible within linear systems can happen, what are called black swans. All of this represents the theoretical underpinnings to the idea within economics of radical uncertainty, also called Knightian uncertainty, which is a risk that is immeasurable, not possible to calculate. With this ontological uncertainty, the future is not yet created. We simply can't predict what entities will exist and how they will interact. When we start to use this theory of bounded rationality, the first consequence is to start to ask, how do people make decisions without the aid of complete information and rationality, or at least when these two things are limited? In complex open environments where the future is unknown, where there are too many choices and our capacity to process them is limited, we can no longer simply depend upon our own independent rational capabilities to make decisions. In such circumstances, people resort to the aid of context. This might be a social context where they simply imitate what other people are doing or they might use a cultural context, using heuristic shortcuts, or create narratives that enable them to form decisions, or they may even use their physical environment as another context through which to interpret an uncertain situation. Imitation is probably the most common shortcut we use when faced with uncertainty. We simply copy whatever other people are doing. This is often called herd mentality, which describes how people are influenced by their peers to adopt certain behavior. This phenomena will create a nonlinear dynamic, meaning the actions of agents are not independent, where they would cancel each other out and we would get an average. But in fact, in this situation, they are interdependent, meaning they will not cancel each other out. The variables will all move in the same direction. Out of this nonlinear dynamic, we will get emergent phenomena, such as stock market bubbles, which cannot be accounted for using linear models that simply aggregate over isolated rational agents. 
When trying to find an optimal solution through logical reasoning is impossible or impractical, heuristic methods are also used to speed the process up of finding satisfactory solutions. Heuristics can be mental shortcuts that ease the cognitive load of making a decision. Examples of this method include using rule of thumb, an educated guess, an intuitive judgment, stereotyping, profiling, or just plain common sense. All of these are derived from very simple schema that agents have developed through an evolutionary process that can be modeled using Bayesian inference. We use these heuristics because they have worked in the past. Things considered common sense are with us because they have stood the test of time. We don't need a PhD in theoretical physics to tell us that things fall downwards towards the ground. It is common sense because we've seen it billions of times and this forms the foundation to our assumption that it will happen the next time. Because it has been validated so many times, we're not about to let go of it. And even though we might not understand the theory behind gravity, we will still use this assumption to help us reason about future events. Simply because it has stood the test of time and worked in the past. In the real world, people aren't computers. Not everything they know has to be logically supported. Many of the tools that we use to interpret our world and make decisions have just evolved as a survival strategy. Actually rationally reasoning about something takes a lot of energy. Most people don't like it and will use lots of shortcuts to avoid it. In more complex environments where we face novel circumstances under uncertainty, we may use cultural, psychological contextualizations, what we call narratives, stories that express emotions. When we create these narratives about the world and how a future course of events will play out, we're really just creating a string of ideas that express our different emotions about that situation. Through them, we express our hopes and fears. This allows us to contextualize the situation and gives us some kind of basis and confidence to make decisions. This narrative allows us to act and make choices in the face of complete uncertainty whilst maintaining some sense of reason. But narratives don't always exist in isolation. They can also be socially constructed, shared and supported by a group of people. With narratives, we get the idea that people can in fact have different conceptions of the world. The rational expectations hypothesis assumes there is only one way to think about the future and all agents have adopted this model and thus the outcome is simply a product of the information inputted. With the idea of narrative, the outcome might in fact be a product of the interplay between different narratives in the way that different organizations or different media channels might promote different discourses and interpretations of an event, influencing different people's opinions. This is an example of why we need to use complex models to represent economic phenomena, because events in the real economy play out as a product of the interaction between different networks. If agents are in relatively simple environments where there is limited uncertainty, where they can gather and process all the information required to make a choice, then the rational choice theory will work. But rational expectation is based upon the assumption that the information agents need is in fact available. People are basing their decisions on information about their environment and the future state to that environment. This model is assuming that the information about the future is in fact knowable. And as we've discussed, this assumption will only really hold if all this is playing out in a closed linear system. It also assumes that people are making choices independently, that in the absence of getting all this information and processing it all, their inaccurate choices will be randomly selected. This whole model is clearly dependent upon additivity, meaning that the system we are modeling is going to have to be linear or else we're going to have problems. If the agent is in a complex environment making choices about the future where that future is fundamentally unknowable, where information is inaccessible or there is too much information to process, then the model of rational choice will be limited. In such circumstances, agents become dependent upon the context they find themselves in. 
in mimicking other people, in using local reference points, in heuristics, or they may create their own context through the formation of narrative in order to interpret events.